The Story of the Three Sisters Garden Before settlers from Europe and other countries came to the Americas, indigenous or native people lived on the land for thousands of years. They were prosperous and very good hunters, gatherers, and agriculturalists or farmers. They gathered the native plants, hunted and fished the native animals, and through many years of trial and error, began to grow plants in order to sustain them through the rough winters, especially in the Northeast, where many months would pass without the proper temperatures for native plants, like herbs and berries, to produce food. By gathering the seeds of plants most useful, People were able to combine the best traits of those plants by harvesting the seeds and planting them again the next season. The Three Sisters Garden was then created. Often people want to know why that name became so important. There are many stories about why, but here are a few reasonable examples. One reason is because men and boys would typically travel from home to hunt and fish. Women and girls were left in the settlements. As you may know, gardening is a lot of work, and gardens need tending and protection against animals that may try to eat the food before it is harvested, so the sisters might refer to the female taking care of these crops. A second reason that the garden may have been referred to as sisters is that there's a bond between siblings, and that bond helps keep them safe, strong, and happy. The garden contains many varieties of corn, squashes, and beans grown together, not separated by type or variety, keeping the family together. A third reason is because families help each other and take care of one another. For example, corn is a very strong stalk and can withstand wind without falling over. Corn dried on the stalk could stand even in the harshest of winter. The strength of the stalk, however important, does not prevent corn from being a very needy plant. Corn requires a lot of nitrogen from the soil. If the same plot of land is used for gardening, over time the nitrogen will be gone and the corn will not survive. Beans of many varieties need something to climb on. Corn stalks are sturdy enough to support the delicate vines of beans without interrupting the production of food. In order to earn the right to climb all over corn stalk, beans have a special ability to take nitrogen from the air and put it into the soil. These are called nitrogen fixating plants. Since the corn's roots and the beans roots grow together, nitrogen is provided by the beans as a payback for the support of the stalks. Squash has big leaves, and big leaves can block the sun from hitting the soil and drying it out quickly. Having squash's big leaves protecting soil means that if there is a period of time when there isn't a lot of rain, the plants will still survive. Squash plants also have very prickly leaves and stems, which helps to keep the animals away so that there will be more for the harvest and less loss to wildlife who are always looking for a quick meal. Perfecting growing techniques and getting just the right combinations of pollen from one plant variety and another was key to the best characteristics of the new plant. This allowed the perfect corn types for popping, grinding, or milling. It also allowed for the best shapes and gourds to be combined to make the best utensils and containers. Seeds were shared and improved over time. Soil combinations and configurations changed to have the best yields from the least amount of land. Safe seed storage from season to season was a great priority. Many varieties of corn, squash, and beans were planted because each has a different preparation for food. Sweet corn can be eaten as soon as it is ripe. However, many corn varieties were dried so that they could be made into popping corn, corn meals, and flour that could be used for making flatbreads and a host of other things. For example, we use corn meal for tortilla chips and corn flour for cornbread. Some varieties of beans 
may be familiar to you. Some beans are eaten when ripe, like green beans, and some are dried, like pinto, kidney, and black-eyed peas, to be used at a later time. Squash has a wide variety as well. Cucumbers, watermelons, and cantaloupes are squash varieties, as are gourds, zucchini, summer squash, and so many more. In addition to food, the three sisters provided resources that could make life easier. For example, corn husks are parts of the plants that cannot be eaten. Once they are dried, they are excellent for weaving and making things. Some very popular things made from corn husks include dolls, masks, mats, vests, moccasins, or shoes, baskets, and many, many other important items that were used every day. Some squash, called gourds, are not for eating. They are useful too. When they are dried, gourds have a hard outer skin and can be used for items like cups, bowls, spoons, containers for water, drums, rattles, and even storage of seeds for the next planting season. Hopefully, you have learned a little bit about the story of the Three Sisters Garden and how very important and efficient they are.